I wanted to tell you about our podcast, Drew Blood's Dark Tales, hosted by me, Drew Blood. We're a weekly storytelling podcast where you'll hear hand-picked horror from our favorite authors, accompanied by a full audio production and performed by yours truly. I invite you to search for Drew Blood's Dark Tales on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you do your listening. And subscribe for longer episodes each and every week. Pause the podcast you're listening to right now and subscribe to Ghost Town. Ghost Town is me, Rebecca Lieb. And me, Jason Horton. And we explore all kinds of weird history, true crime, hauntings, paranormal events, and more. We cover the Slenderman stabbing, Tesla's death ray, the D.B. Cooper copycat, the cheerleader murder plot, Heaven's Gate, the Lars Midtank mystery, and Tuesday's Child, Ellie's first satanic magazine, just to name a few. You can find Ghost Town on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. In 1942, Southern California was under siege in the Battle of Los Angeles. I'm Jason Horton, and this is Strange Year. The world was almost directly in the middle of World War II in 1942, and it eclipsed much of what was going on in the world, historically speaking. However, you could see the very iconic film Casablanca in theaters and hear the equally iconic Bing Crosby song, White Christmas, on the radio. However, I'd like to talk about the war on U.S. soil that made 1942 a strange year. The Battle of Los Angeles, February 1942. Anti-aircraft guns went into action against unidentified aircraft in the Los Angeles area shortly after 3 a.m. Pacific War Time this morning. The anti-aircraft guns began barking during a blackout ordered by the 4th Interceptor Command at 2.25 a.m. The unidentified object, which some sources thought might be a blimp, moved slowly down the Pacific coast from Santa Monica and disappeared south of Long Beach. Army officials declined to comment on the possibility that the object might have been a blimp. However, it required nearly 30 minutes to travel some 25 miles, far slower than an airplane. Watchers on the rooftop of the Columbia Broadcasting Building in the heart of Hollywood could plainly see the flashes of guns and searchlights sweeping the skies in a wide arc along the coastal area. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, and a Japanese submarine surfacing and shelling oil installations just north of Santa Barbara on February 23, 1942, the U.S. was on high alert. On the evening of February 24, 1942, the city's air raid warning system announced the approach of a hostile aircraft. Naval intelligence instructed units on the California coast to brace themselves for a potential Japanese attack. Shortly after 2 a.m. on February 25th, military radar picked up what appeared to be an enemy 120 miles west of Los Angeles. Air raid sirens sounded and a citywide blackout was put into effect. Within minutes, troops had manned anti-aircraft guns and began sweeping the skies with searchlights. About an hour later, the shooting started. Following reports of an unidentified object in the skies, troops in Santa Monica unleashed a barrage of anti-aircraft and 50 caliber machine gun fire. Before long, many of the city's other coastal defense weapons had joined in. Gun crews at Army posts along the coastline fired 1,433 rounds. Panic set in. There was a claim of a Japanese plane crash landing in the streets of Hollywood. The Secretary of the Navy said there had been no air raid, no enemy planes. It was just a case of jitters. Embarrassment turned to outrage. The Army was accused of shooting up an empty sky. Authorities arrested 20 Japanese Americans for allegedly trying to signal the non-existent aircraft. The Japanese military later claimed it had never flown an aircraft over the city during World War II. The most logical explanation for the firefight is that trigger-happy servicemen and rudimentary radar systems combined to produce a false alarm. In 1983, the Office of Air Force History outlined the events of the L.A. air raid and noted that meteorological balloons had been released prior to the barrage to help determine wind conditions. Their lights in silver color could have been what first triggered the alerts. Once the shooting began, the combination of searchlights, smoke, and anti-aircraft might have led gunners to believe they were firing on enemy planes even though none were actually present. And there were conspiracy theories that it was actually a UFO invasion. 
The incident-defining photo published in the L.A. Times has been cited by some UFOlogists and conspiracy theorists that there's evidence of an extraterrestrial invasion. The photo clearly shows searchlights focused on an alien spaceship. However, the photo was heavily modified by photo retouching prior to publication, a routine practice in graphic arts of the time intended to improve the contrast in black and white photos. Even though there was no true enemy in the Battle of Los Angeles, there were casualties. Three residents were killed in automobile accidents, and two others died of heart attacks. The 1979 movie 1941 and the 2011 film Battle Los Angeles were loosely based on the Battle of Los Angeles. I want to thank History.com and the LA Times. It's helpful if you can rate and review five stars wherever you listen to this podcast. And if you want to message me, you can do so on Instagram at Strange Year Pod. Thank you for listening, and I'll be back next week for another episode of Strange Year. Concussion of the shells could be felt in downtown Los Angeles, 15 miles away. U.S. Army planes quickly took to the dark skies. But whether they contacted the object has not been announced. Army officials say they will not comment until they receive a full report of the action. Although some watchers say they saw airplanes in the air, semi-official sources say they probably were the U.S. Army's pursuit. Several observers say they saw one or more planes spotlighted by 20 or 30 searchlights. The object moved southward, presumably over Huntington Park at the western edge of Los Angeles, and on southward to about Long Beach on the coast. By 3.30 a.m., observers said the object appeared to be over the south of Long Beach. Searchlights closely followed the object down the coast and kept it centered in their glare. Shells frequently could be seen bursting near the object, but none appeared to hit it. The shooting stopped about 3.30 a.m. The shooting brought warfare to the front door of this city of a million and a quarter population, for the first time since December 7th. Already it was alert to the presence off the Southern California coast of a Japanese submarine which had pumped 25 shells into an oil field north of Santa Barbara Monday evening. Because of the presence of the submarine, a three-hour alert was ordered at dusk last night and civilian authorities stood at their posts while the Army and Navy continued their search for the submersible. The evening alert ended at 10.23 p.m. But another was sounded at 2.22 a.m., and the blackout followed within three minutes. It covered Los Angeles County from Santa Monica to Pomona. At 2.27, all Southern California radio stations were ordered off the air, except those in San Diego. Approximately 20 minutes after the firing died down, the ship returned and headed westward from Long Beach toward Santa Monica. The guns went into action again, hurling round after round of shells at the object. The second barrage appeared to be closer to downtown Los Angeles since watchers could hear the concussion of the guns more clearly and the flash of bursting shells was brighter. Then the ship disappeared for the second time over the ocean. Pause the podcast you're listening to right now and subscribe to Ghost Town. Ghost Town is me, Rebecca Lieb. And me, Jason Horton. And we explore all kinds of weird history. True crime. Hauntings. Paranormal events and more. We cover the Slenderman stabbing, Tesla's death ray, the D.B. Cooper copycat, the cheerleader murder plot. Heaven's Gate, the Lars Midtank mystery, and Tuesday's Child, Ellie's first satanic magazine, just to name a few. You can find Ghost Town on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts.